Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, and thank you for stopping by. All right, guys, for this episode of Bullet Points this morning, we are going to lay out the battlefield and a roadmap to look at all of the gun control infringements that the left has put in place in the recent week alone. Now, some highlights I'm going to say here. This is highly unusual. Typically, when they have an initiative and they want to get something done, they unify behind one bill. It's one big push, media, a blitz, everything happens. It's not usually across the board, eight different bills from different branches of government. There's something odd going on here, which has led me to the conclusion that I'm about to lay out for you in this video. I'm going to do the best that I can to give you a high-level view of all of these. If you want to see more details on all the videos I'm about to reference that we've done on this channel, everything, including the sources, we linked in the description box below. If you guys are new, we'd love to have you subscribe and hit that bell because the sooner we can get this information to you guys, the better, the more we swell our ranks, the more we make a positive impact for the next generation when we pass these blessings along. But now I'm going to say a quick word from our sponsor. I'm going to hit this. And the why, this all comes back to Biden. This is incredibly important. And then we're going to hit it on the other side. Now the sponsor for this video is SDI. I know a lot of you out there like to repair and upgrade your own guns. If you're looking for a way to take your hobby to the next level, Sonoran Desert Institute can help. The online programs at SDI cover everything from gunsmithing, ballistics, shooting sports management, and more. Plus, tools and materials are shipped directly to your door for hands-on practice. It has never been a better time to turn your hobby into something useful for your future. There's a link in the description box below to find out more, so give them a click if that's something that you think will be helpful for yourself and your future. And thank you to SDI for making this video possible to get this information to you quickly. All right, so here's what I'm going to lay out, and I need you guys to send this one out and tell me what you think in the comments field if I landed this plane correctly and if, I'm, if it's making sense to you. Now, right now in the Senate, there's a logjam at that filibuster. You guys have been hearing about it for about 18 months. The Democrats hate that filibuster right now because they can't do anything with it. You have to, in order to pass any legislation that we're about to cover, you have to peel off 10 Republicans and secure Manchin and Cinema. So you got to get 100% of Democrats and 10 Republicans to peel off. A very high bar, which feeds into the videos that we did earlier this week, or excuse me, earlier last week, all around how they're setting the bar very low for success for their gun control desires. They are, flat out. You can go back and look at the videos last week. But here's what they've got in place. This is just what they've thrown against the wall in the last week to week and a half. Now, H.R. 8 and H.R. 1446, those have been there for about 18 months. Nothing's changed there. Creates national registries, restricts individual purchasing back and forth, like lots of stuff. This is already dead in the water. It's been stymied in the Senate forever. Manchin's not on board. Cinema's not on board. There's a lot of people not on board on this one. But then you come to the one that I'm going pu to put on a highlight right here. I'm going to show you what's happening new with it. Graham and Blumenthal red flag laws. Now, the Graham and Blumenthal negotiations that are happening in the Senate, that's the one you focus on. If I'm a betting man, that's where the money goes because that's the one that seems the most likely to get what they need to get done in the Senate. Now, I'm going to come back to that. I'm going to walk you through it. Like I said, every video that I'm referencing, there's a link down there in the description where you can watch the whole video to find out more. Now, you've got Cory Booker's bill. That's the one that raised the age limit to buy firearms. It also required you to get a license from the DOJ to even have a Second Amendment right. That's not going anywhere. That's extreme. Dianne Feinstein, more noise, AR bans, mag bans, same kind of thing. Jerry Nadler's omnibus package, the one that he just released two or three days ago that they're voting on today, those aren't going to go anywhere. There are eight bills in there, such as raising the limit, national red flag laws, national store, safe storage laws. Those aren't going anywhere. Again, they have to get over the 60 vote threshold in the Senate. This is incredibly important because they're throwing everything at the wall that they can. Pelosi's got an AR ban that she wants mocked up at Biden's request. We're going to get to that in one second. Pelosi's hasn't even been done yet. The video hadn't even been done yet because the bill hasn't been marked up. Jared at Guns and Gadgets is streaming it this morning, watching them do it. And we'll have more videos on that coming forward. Check it out if you want to see it on his channel. Biden's executive order. Now, this is interesting because now you're jumping into a different branch. Biden's executive orders, his press secretary came out and said, we're looking at executive actions. Then they, in the next sentence, they said, yeah, we pretty much shot our wad on that one. We can't do anything. No kidding, you can't do anything because you're not a legislature. So then now this all comes together and that brings up Biden. And that's the reason that I left that last. Why would this be occurring? In a normal scenario, as I alluded to, you're going to see all these bills unify behind one bill or all these Democrats unify behind one bill and go forward and push it. Full on media blitz, full on presidential blitz, 
complete unison, we're going to get it done. A vote, a vote is what we need, as Schumer says. That's what you'll normally see. You normally do not see a smattering of eight different bills. No, actually, 12 different bills across the board, seeing what throws against the wall and sticks from people that they know the bills are not going to pass. There's something here, and this is something that factors in. Inside a Biden White House adrift, amid a rolling series of calamities and sinking approval ratings, the president's feeling lately is just that he can't catch a break, and the angst is rippling through his party. Angst is rippling through his party is correct. Now you're starting to see why they're putting all these bills out for self-preservation. They have a midterm coming up, and they got to be able to say they did something, and they can't rely on Biden to carry them because his poll numbers are trash. Biden is rattled by his sinking approval rating and is looking to regain voters' confidence that he can provide the sure-handed leadership he promised during the campaign. People close to the president say, well, that's interesting because these numbers came out yesterday, the same time that he pressured Pelosi to do an AR ban, an, AM, an AR mag ban, and a magazine limit ban. Isn't that interesting how all of these things happen? Nothing occurs in a vacuum in Washington, D.C. Let's keep going. Check this out. Biden is rattled by his sinking approval rating and is looking to regain... Oh, sorry, that's the wrong way. I just did that. Biden's approval rating drops to a new low. A majority of Americans disapprove of President Biden's job performance, and most are unhappy with the way things are currently going in the country. President Joe Biden's approval rating has sunk to a new low, with only 36% of Americans saying they approve his job performance, and 59% saying they disapprove, according to the latest polls from Reuters Ipsos. Biden's current approval rating is just a few percentage points higher than the 33% low of former President Donald Trump hit in December of 2017. Biden's current approval rating represents a 6% slide from the previous week when it was 42% Reuters reported. With midterms on the horizon, some have speculated that Biden's low approval ratings could cost them the control of the House of Representatives. Oh, the House of Representatives is gone, boo-boo. You guys might want to be worried about the Senate. The House is toast. It's already been done through redistricting. But now, check this last little piece out. This is from the guy who actually endorsed Biden in the primary, or in the uh, yeah, in the primaries for the Democratic uh, candidacy for presidency. "Quote: I don't know what's required here," South Carolina's Democrat representative James Clyburn said to NBC News. "Quote: But I do know the poll numbers have been stuck where they are for all for far too long. The Democrats are putting out, and this is kind of the payoff of the whole video. The Democrats are putting out." All this energy, they are all putting out their own bills because they cannot rely on the party's polling and the president's polling to carry them through the midterms. They're trying to make their own bills and make it look like I did something even though it didn't pass, which explains why you have so many gun control bills going forward, most of which will fail. Now, going back to Senator Graham and Senator Blumenthal's video or <laughs> videos, uh, bills, that's the one on red flags that we're going to be focusing on. So when you're ready for your phone calls and you're ready for your emails, that's probably the one that we're going to mobilize on because that actually has a chance of getting close to that 60 uh, vote threshold. And that's what I've got for you guys. Let me know what you think of in the comments field below, and I will see you tonight at the 9 p.m. segment. I'm Braden. See you later.